Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Disruptive Investing. I feel like we should do like a Star Wars joke here. Can R2 save Rivian? So Rivian CEO, RJ Skarin, she unveiled their upcoming R2 SUV last Thursday at their headquarters in Irvine, California. Probably you heard about it because the media was all over it. This is such a big event. Uh, this, he said, will come out in the first half of 2026. It'll have a starting price of $45,000 with a 300 plus miles of range. It'll seat five. It'll go zero to 60 in under three seconds. But don't be fooled. That's not for $45,000. I'm sure that's going to be one of the higher tier ranges. If the R2 looks identical to their R1S $80,000 luxury SUV. Well, other than being 16 inches shorter, two inches narrower, and five inches shorter going this way, it does look like the same truck. Yeah, I mean, I have to point out that they designed the R2 before the R1S um, because, you know, they kind of knew, they got to see Tesla's playbook, right? And they knew that, like, you had to eventually come out with the Model 3, which we're going to talk about. Um, and so this isn't something they just designed. The reason why it's like, wow, that looks like the R1S is because it was they were all designed at the same time by the same designers. So this is kind of like how the Tesla Model Y looks a lot like the Model X, which is, you know, that's fine. Okay. Now, originally, Rivian was going to build a new $5 billion factory outside of Atlanta to manufacture the R2. But Rivian, I think, realized that building a new factory from scratch was going to take too long. So they have pivoted and they're now planning to expand their existing factory in normal Illinois, which will likely still cost them billions of dollars, probably cost them about $5 billion. <laughs> okay, so we talked about this a little bit on Tesla Time News this week. This is Rivian's, you know, Model 3 moment. The moment where you take the luxury brand that you've built up and then you unveil a cheaper model that still has the brand's cachet, but now can be affordable to a much larger group of customers. Exactly. So the average selling price for a vehicle in the U.S. is currently $47,400. That is according to Kelly Blue Book. So if Rivian can make the R2 profitable for a $45,000 starting price, like RJ Scaringe hopes, well, that would be good news for Rivian. But here's the thing. If it were that easy, then Fisker, Lucid, heck, GM, Ford, Honda, they'd all be doing it. Rivian only has about six quarters of runway left before they run out of money. And it's not just me saying that. Elon had just said that. Thing is, they just lost $5 billion last year, and they only have about $10 billion left. The problem is that as of Q4, Rivian is losing about $43,000 on each vehicle they sell. That's right. A negative margin. So sell more, lose more. They have to somehow turn that around to a positive profit margin in two years. All while selling a very similar vehicle to the R1S, but that costs $35,000 less. So if you're wondering how Rivian plans to do that, RJ Scaringe says that they're going to use the R2 to renegotiate burdensome supplier contracts. So I guess RJ calls up like a seat or a steering wheel supplier and goes, Hey, Randy, it's RJ. You know, we're going to be selling millions of R2s in a couple of years. So do you think you could cut me some slack about the price of those steering wheels? Hey, RJ. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, how about we give you a volume discount and cut 10% off the price? Oh, I was thinking more like 90%. Do you think you could do that for us, Randy? See, while Tesla kept getting more and more vertically integrated as they scaled production, bringing things like seat manufacturing in-house, Rivian is still reliant on a ton of suppliers like Samsung SDI for their batteries or ZF for the electric motor parts or Magna for lots of their components. And while Tesla keeps improving the engineering of their latest vehicles, like bringing in 48-volt architecture to the Cybertruck, Rivian, which actually designed the R2 before the R1S, is not. So to stay alive, let's be clear. Rivian has to do the following things pretty much perfectly. Number one, the R2 has to be a big hit. When the R2 comes out in two years, it has to have huge demand right out of the gate. Rivian will have to have huge pre-orders. Now, by the way, Rivian lowered their pre-order deposit to just $100 down from $1,000 for the R1S because they need this number to be really big. I think they need it to be in the hundreds of thousands, if not a million. Now, RJ just said that in the first 24 hours, they got 68,000 orders. That's great, but that's usually when the big numbers come in right after the launch event, and then they tend to trickle. So we'll, we'll have to see. I was originally going to give them this one because the R1T and the R1S look so cool and so many people seem to like them. But let's be real here for a second. The R2 will be going head to head with the Tesla Model Y, the best selling car in the world. So this is not an easy task. Number two, the R2 has to come out on time. 2026 is already too late in my opinion. But if Rivian misses anything, 
and can't start real deliveries in the first half of 2026, in my opinion, it will be too late. Yeah, they just won't have the cash left. Uh, they'll already be running on fumes by that point. Number three, the R2 will have to have a $45,000 starting price. Rivian can't bump the price up when the R2 comes out. Uh, they're relying on that price point because, again, it'll be competing head-to-head -head with the Model Y, which, as of right now, starts at $43,990. So they can't be like, well, it's two years later, so uh, inflation, so it's going to be $55,000. They can't do that because think about this. Over the next two years, I'll bet Tesla's going to actually be able to reduce the price of the Model Y as they get their costs lower and lower. Number four, the R2 will have to qualify for the entire $7,500 federal tax credit to have a chance of competing with the Model Y because the Model Y does qualify. And so you can get a Model Y for $36,490 with the tax credit. Yeah, that means Rivian will have to ensure that their battery minerals are sourced from North America or U.S. free trade partners. That is not an easy task, especially when they're going to be producing them, hopefully, in high quantities. Number five, the R2 will have to be profitable and not just break even profitable, but seriously profitable. Yeah, I mean, I'd say at least 10% profit margin. Otherwise, again, why bother if you're going to sell more and lose more? This one to me is the least likely one to be achieved. I find it next to impossible for Rivian to pull this one off in just two years when they haven't been able to even come close so far. You know, it's not like they're at, oh, we're just a few thousand dollars away from profitability. They're $43,000 away from profitability on a vehicle per that car. cost over 80000 to start with. But I mean, Rivian did just lay off another 10% of their salaried workforce last month, so that should have saved them some money, right? Uh, I don't think you get yourself out of this problem <laughs> by just firing some people, especially when you're going to have to hire more people to build out the factory and to build more cars. Number six is autonomy. RJ says that the R2 will have, quote, 11 cameras and five radars and should be able to drive with a, quote, very high level of self-driving or driving on a highway without one's hands on the wheel. Ooh, a very high level. What if Tesla cracks full self-driving before the R2 is released? We all seem to be forgetting that autonomy is the future of road transportation. Who do you think is going to crack that first? We have Rivian. It's years behind Tesla's full self-driving technology. And as soon as Tesla cracks full self-driving, it's game over, in my opinion, for Rivian. Yeah, but what about the R3, Jesse? RJ just announced that this will follow the R2 as their even smaller crossover starting at, I think, $37,000. Again, if they can't make the R2 work, the R3 won't matter. And I want to go back. You, you know, we talked about all of these six steps that they're going to need to hit. There is a zeroth step, and that is that they need to stay alive for the next two years Exactly. in order to actually put out the, the freaking R2. And you might be saying, oh, well, haven't they been improving their margins on the trucks? No. <laughs> they were headed in the right direction. <laughs> they were headed in the right direction, and then they got worse. So last year in Q3, they were only losing something like 33000 $33,000 per truck. And then they blew it the next quarter. And I think it's because they're pulling a lot of shenanigans just to get it that low. Like no. they were pulling out all the tricks. Look, disclaimer, we're not financial advisors. Don't take our advice for whether or not to buy or sell a stock. Do your own research. Investment involves risk. But I want to know what you guys think. So let us know down in the comments what your thoughts are about Rivian. And as we wrap up here, I'll leave you with this. If we're right, and this moment in Rivian's history is akin to when Tesla announced their Model 3 back in March of 2016, then Rivian is going to have to go through a similar production hell that Tesla did. There's going to be supply chain issues. They're trying to ramp up production quickly while keeping quality high and keeping costs down. Any one of the thousands of parts that isn't ready will hold up the entire production line. And that's not to mention service. I want to mention this one big thing here. You don't buy a car without knowing you're going to be able to service it, right? Well, right now, Rivian has barely enough service locations to support a tiny fleet of R1s. We know this because we have one. How is Rivian going to afford expanding that service network quickly across the country? This was another problem that Tesla had, but they had years to do it because as they had these luxury cars, they slowly built out their service. The only box that Rivian already checked off is that the R2 will use NACs. So lucky for them, Tesla already took care of the charging. That is the charging standard they'll be using. So they won't have to build out their own Rivian adventure network, which by the way, they never did. Bottom line. My guess is that in two years, we'll be reporting that Rivian is either merging with another company or being bought by Apple for pennies on the dollar. Yeah, I really do think that's probably the only way out here is some kind of merge or 
look, Apple just gave up on doing an EV for, what, 10 years? I think they're probably deciding to spend some of their cash. I mean, their shareholders at Apple are probably going to demand that they get into EVs. And since they couldn't do it by starting their own, I think they're going to look for something that does have moderate success. I mean, Rivian has a brand name, right, and is well-liked. So my guess would be it'll be the Apple Rivian. What are Rivian's other options here? I mean, can they issue more shares, or is the stock price just too low for that? I mean, they, yeah, exactly. You can only issue shares if you think you can raise enough from the shares. And as you get cheaper and cheaper stock prices, you dilute more, which means that investors run for the hills. Um, they do have their EDV, right? They've got, or it's been renamed now, their electric delivery van. I'm sure it's called the Rivian delivery van now. Um, so they've got, you know, delivering vans to Amazon and other companies. We don't know what the profit margins are on that van. They don't break them out. I don't know if they're making money on each sale or not. So that's a good thing because we do know recent pictures showed like tons of them sitting at their factory. Although why are they sitting at the factory and not being delivered? But that's beside the point. The whole point though, is when you're making vehicles, you got to make them profitably. Mm -hmm. If they're making the van not profitably, it doesn't really matter that there's demand for it. I don't, I don't think demand is the problem here. I really think they designed a really good looking vehicle. So lots of people like it and seem to want it. I think the problem is going to be whether or not they can make it profitably. And I don't think that's easy hmm. at all. I'm going to have to push back on the on the demand part, I feel like. No, I mean, with the a good price point. point, I mean, sure, the R2 sounds good, but again, are we going to get there? And that's another problem. Did they just Osborne themselves? Well, and let's not forget what else is coming out around 2026. <laughs> There's these Tesla Model 2, we'll call it, which mm -hmm. is the $25,000 vehicle. So while Rivian, let's say we give them all the six things, right? And they did it. Um, they're going to have a $45,000 vehicle. Then Tesla comes out with a $25,000 vehicle and just cleans up. Last point, last point, and I swear this the last point kia's ev7 or uh, not ev7 uh whatever the their big boxy suv is i think that's going to still come in cheaper and before well, the r2 and, and kia says that they're going to have a much cheaper model by the end of this year right which if they can do it then who's going to want to buy rivians right and again that forty five thousand dollar r2 is the starting price model yeah that's lot, not the one that can do zero to 63 right. seconds so you're probably means. talking 55 which means that competing with the model y gets further and further i don't know let us know what you think, but I'm not uh, that hopeful. We've had our Rivian R1T for about two years now. Yep. Um, we're going to be coming out with a video uh, kind of going over everything about the truck um, coming out pretty soon. So you want to subscribe over on our Now You Know channel uh, to check that one out if you're interested. We'll see you guys next week on Disruptive Investing.